Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Agribusiness Now, the agricultural program that brings to you all of the activities that are currently taking place within the Ministry of Agriculture. This week's program promises to not only be intriguing but also enlightening. First off, we have the do's and don'ts of the Agricultural Produce and Livestock Act of 2007, updates on the Aricom project, and the Bureau of Standards hosts a national quality policy workshop. Then on the how to do segment, learn how to make your own pork sausages, plus the news and announcements. But before we get into the details, let's take a short break. Did you know that the OECS Agriculture Competitiveness Project, otherwise known as AgriCup Project, has been officially launched? Well, it was. And the project aims at enhancing access to markets and sales for competitively selected farmers and fisher folks. But to access funds, you must be part of a productive alliance. So what is a productive alliance, you ask? It's a business arrangement between farmers and official folks on one hand, and on the other hand, aggregators. Aggregators can be cooperatives, lead farmers, or marketers and agro-processors. The project provides matching grants to a productive alliance. A minimum of 10 farmers or fishers and an aggregator, such as a lead farmer, a cooperative, marketer, or an agro-processor. Farmers and fisher folk in Productive Alliance can receive up to $8,000 US dollars while the aggregator, lead farmer or fisher, cooperative, marketer or agro-processor can receive up to $120,000. For more information, please contact Ministry of Agriculture, Richmond Hill at 456-1410 or 456-1111, extension 311 or 321, or email agricomsvg at mail.gov.vc. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Agribusiness Now. On our first segment of the program, we have the legal advisor to the Farmer Support Company Limited, Mr. Noel Bruce, who will be providing us with some do's and don'ts of the Agricultural Produce and Livestock Act of 2007. Today we continue our discussion of the Agricultural Produce and Livestock Prevention of Theft Act of 2007. What we're doing today is we're more or less concluding, we are summarizing all that we have discussed so far so that we have a common understanding and a meeting of the minds as it were. So, uh, who is a registered farmer? Ideally, we and the Ministry of Agriculture would like all the farmers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to be registered. Now, who qualifies to be a farmer? And um, to become eligible for um, a farmer's ID, you must be 18 years or older and have at least one of the following. One head of cattle, two heads of either pigs, goats, sheep, or one head of any of the two. 12 poultry, fowls, duck, turkeys, 12 rabbits, or one hive of bees, 10 tree crops, that is like plum rolls, avocados, mangoes, 30 plants of uh, plantains or bananas, about one lot of lands with um, vegetables or root crops, um, dashin, edos, or even if you're planting flowers. Uh, 500 square feet or more of raised stands of agricultural crops. So for example, if the lands in your backyard, for example, that you have raised stands, where you have probably, because I know mostly we plant lettuce and so forth on stands, if you have that, and you have 500 square feet of that, even if you may not have lands elsewhere, that qualifies you to um, apply for um, a farmer's ID. Or 1,000 square feet of greenhouse with agricultural um, crops. In summary, I would like us to 
to look at some do's and some don'ts. I will begin first with the do's. Registering. Ensure you register as a farmer and have received your farmer's ID. The process takes about one month to get your, um, your farmer's ID. You come to the Ministry of Agriculture, fill out the application, and the person who is responsible for issuing the farmer's ID will um, advise you accordingly. Two, on receiving your farmer's ID, ensure that you collect a book of the certificate of purchase. In other words, this is, this is um, the seller's certificate that you will issue when you are selling a particular uh, product, be it agricultural um, produce or livestock. So ensure that you have them because that is very um, important. Um, in an important aspect of the, um, the transaction. Always keep your farmer's ID or your seller's certificate with you, especially if you are conducting um, business. If either is lost or misplaced, make a report to the relevant authority. So if you misplace your, um, your farmer's ID, please come to the, the um, office of the um, Ministry of Agriculture where you um, obtain the, the ID and make a report. And the ID card is renewed every five years. So please pay attention to that because after five years, the card will become in invalid. Now let us go on to the sale of agricultural produce and livestock. So all sales, according to the, the Act, all sales must take place between the hours of 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. And always issue a receipt on completion of a sale. So once you have completed the sale, and sale involves you passing, are uh, you giving to the, um, the buyer, a product, be it an agricultural product or um, livestock, and they in turn give you money. Okay? Then you will issue them with this, this certificate of purchase that I have just mentioned before. If it is a credit arrangement in that you are giving your produce, but you are not receiving money at the same time, then you should not issue a certificate of purchase because that is saying that you, the, the buyer is purchasing your produce. Instead, you should issue a receipt. And this receipt also you will get or you can get from the Ministry of Agriculture where you obtained your farmer's ID. Always keep a duplicate of the receipt. Ensure that the receipt or your certificate of purchase is properly written up. It should have your ID number, a description of the produce or the livestock, the value in, the, in, in that how much it is the cost of what you are, um, are selling or the price, and the contact address or telephone number and the date of the sale. And ensure that the animal or the produce that you are able to, you will be able to identify them. The OECS Agriculture Competitiveness Agricom project is offering matching grants for competitively selected business projects to farmers, fisher folks, aggregators and agro-processors, supplying monetary funds from 8,000 to 120,000 US dollars. Here is Mr. Colville King, focal point to the Aricom project to give us more information on it. We've been running a call for business idea proposal since July. Uh, we have extended that call until 6th of December. So those of you who were interested in submitting proposals but were a bit late, you still have a, you know, a few weeks uh, to complete those business idea proposals. Uh, what we're encouraging you to do is to seek the assistance of the business support consultant, the business development consultant, who would assist you in terms of guiding the development and the preparation of these business idea um, templates that we have prepared. 
We know it could be a bit tedious, it's not difficult, but sometimes you require a bit of you know technical advice in terms of how you complete, how you know how best you prepare your idea. Uh, just to remind persons who are, are not fully familiar with the with, with the requirement, we are in fact financing investments in agricultural marketing, uh, essentially increasing market access for fishers and farmers. And so what we're encouraging is a partnership between fishers and processors or marketers, farmers and processors or marketers. So essentially, we will finance the you know good ideas which will tackle a specific market, would supply a specific market uh, a market that has growth, scope for development, and that can sell on behalf of significant numbers of farmers or officials. We're interested in doing that. We're not interested in financing individual projects, but to support projects where there is a partnership between fishers and farmers on one side and processors and uh, our marketers on the other side. Uh, one of the I've seen some really good ideas coming through and I'd like to encourage you know persons with some of those ideas to complete your plan. We are in fact encouraging proposals that has you know innovation in it. So for example, how can you reach new markets through the use of information technology? How can you increase your production or reduce your cost of production by investing in equipment? How can you be more competitive by investing you know, on the business processes, the partnerships, uh, preparing a better product, a better packaged product? Those are the kinds of investments uh, that we're willing to finance. And just to say, on the farmer or fisher side, the project would contribute up to $21,600 if you match that with $5,400. A group of farmers or a group of fishers collectively uh, want to partner with a processor or a marketer, you can get up to 120,000 US dollars. Just that each farmer could only get up to a maximum of 21,600, but that that farmer or fisher must match it with 5,004 thereabout. And the processor or the the marketer, what we call an aggregator. Uh, can also benefit up to 120,000 US dollars. If that is a farmer's group or a fisher group, you only have to match 20%. Okay? So in other words, to benefit up to 120,000 US dollars, you'd have to contribute about 30,000 US. That could come from your coffers, your own money, but that could also come from a financial institution who is willing to partner with you. Um, knowing that you're receiving significant funds through matching grants, uh, who would be willing to finance the other um, side of it? The form is not difficult. It takes some time. The issue is sometimes the documentation is required. You may need evidence. So you say that you want to uh, uh, sell to a particular market. You have a demand. But we would need to see a letter or contract or something that demonstrates that, in fact, you have some space in the market. You know, if you have uh, an agreement between the fishers and the processor or the marketer, we want to see a signature of the farmer saying, we are part of this. You know, so it requires just a bit of documentation. There's nothing difficult. But if you need the support, the business consultant is on the ground, you, of course, can call the Ministry of Agriculture at 61410 or you can email the, the project directly at agricomsvg at gmail.com or agricomsvg at mail.gov.vc. So please contact us. Don't wait until the 6th of December to be rushing through. Uh, we're hoping that in the next two weeks we can have all of those proposals in and then there may be one or two fine-tuning things to do. On Tuesday 18 November 2019, a national quality policy workshop was held at the Fisheries Conference Room with the purpose of developing a document which focuses on establishing policies 
which assists local farmers and agro-processors in meeting international market standards. Here is Wilbert Jack with the details. With an aim to achieve accelerated economic growth, increase in exports, ensure supply of safe quality products at competitive prices, and to contribute towards the protection of the environment, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Bureau of Standards, in collaboration with the Commonwealth Standards Network, CSN, and the British Standards Institution, BSI, conducted a meeting with public sector stakeholders at the Fisheries Conference Room on Monday, November 18, 2019. In his welcoming remarks, Executive Director of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Bureau of Standards, Ezra Ledger, gave a synopsis of the mission of the meeting relative to the development of a quality policy document. In June of this year, um, initial consultations were conducted um, among the public and private sector as well as among um, several um, targeted stakeholders. And information was gathered towards uh, this document and as such, after a few months, the consultants are back with us again so as to present their findings. They would have presented two documents. One is a situation analysis and the other was the draft quality policy. Then these documents were emailed to the stakeholders for your comment and review. And this consultation, obviously, what it will do, it will basically you know, solicit your comment, your review of this document to ensure that it can capture exactly what your department or what your regulatory entity will entail. Now, as I said, this document is for all of us. It's championed by the Bureau of Standards, but we're all part of a quality infrastructure. And as such, we have to ensure that those endeavors that will be championed by your specific department, whether it's um, the Public Health Department, Ministry of Agriculture, um, Health, um, Trade, wherever you may be serving as a regulator, or as a business support entity, it means that we have to ensure that this document can fulfill effectively um, our goal. I've gone through the document, it seems to have captured substantively what the Bureau of Standards wants. So therefore, it is now the responsibility of each of you stakeholders, public stakeholders, to contribute effectively to ensure that your responsibility and some of the objectives of your department are captured in the quality policy. To give a general overview of the situational analysis of the development of the National Quality Policy document was team leader of the Commonwealth Standards Network, CSN Caribbean Project, Charles Barker. We hope that we will be able to leave you with a situation analysis that is accurate for today. This is a moving target because you change your regulations, you change your practices, you change many things. So you would need to keep that situation analysis up to date so that it all the time it tells you where you're at. And uh, we will provide you with a national quality policy that you will have developed in a way. We just give you a document, but you are the ones that have to agree to the situation analysis accuracy, and you have to agree and propose changes, etc., to the national quality policy. We will provide you with a implementation plan Again, that will have to be discussed between all of you so that the implementation plan is realistic and it is doable, given that various departments, various ministries have various responsibilities within the national quality infrastructure. This is what we are doing at present. We will be back next year because the purpose of doing this is to get your feedback. So please be very active with your feedback. Don't be shy to tell us that we are wrong, okay? Because we may be, you know, in certain areas, may, we may have not considered them within the context of the situation analysis or within the context of a draft policy. Here now is another team member of the CSN, Mike Pete, who gave some insights on the specifics of the quality policy draft document. What we have tried to do since the last visit is to capture all of the information that you provided to us and we've looked at other quality policies around the world. What we said in the last meeting was that a lot of work has been done around the world in national quality policies. And so UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, got quite a few of the agencies together in Vienna about 18 months ago, 18 to 24 months ago. And we looked as a group as to what has worked, where the pressure is coming from, and what hasn't worked. 
And what was found there is that a lot of the donor agencies are now starting to require some sort of coordinated plan in a country to look at the issues that Mr. Barker identified earlier in his speech. So laboratory capacity, inspection capacity, certification capacity. And what they have found is that up to now, in many cases, it has been a very ad hoc, crisis-driven initiative. So as soon as a, an issue comes up as far as safety or trade, then the various ministries then try and tackle these things normally in a silo. And when the funds locally run out, then they approach donors. And then you end up with capacity which is duplicated and overlapping. So the policy is to look at these things proactively, looking at what are the national strategic needs as far as export products, health and safety issues, and how can these all be combined to get the maximum benefit from the budgets which are always constrained to make sure that they're used properly. And in that way then, when you go to government for your respective budgets, they can see that there is this cooperation between agencies, that you are addressing national, regional and international needs, and that you can go with confidence to donors with the implementation plan. And instead of them coming and spending half their budget on redoing a situation analysis, you can say, we've done this, we don't need any more money for that. What we need now is concrete, support for these particular areas to meet these objectives. It's time for you to learn how to make your very own pork sausages. Let's take you through the steps. Let's look at how to make pork sausages. First, you will need 14 pounds of pork consisting of 70% lean meat and 30% fat. That's 14 pounds pork, consisting of 70% lean meat and 30% fat. You will also need 3.5 pounds bread or breadcrumbs, 3 pounds cold water or ice cubes, 80 grams seasoning, let me repeat, 3 pounds cold water or ice cube and 80 grams of seasoning. These ingredients will give you up to 20 pounds of sausages. Let's look at the method now for preparing pork sausages. First, all bones, grizzles and skin before cutting to get a better quality product. Then you cut the meat into manageable sizes for your food processor or mincer. Next, you mince the bread to make your breadcrumbs. You can freeze the bread overnight, then mince in food processors. After doing all this, you add seasoning to mince bread and blend thoroughly. The breadcrumbs prevent the sausage from bursting when frying. Mix mince meat and breadcrumbs together by hand or suitable machine until firm. Next, add a fat to the ingredients and mince in mincer or food processor. If you are using a mincer, it is best to add some cold water or ice cubes to maintain the moisture as the mincer generates heat when mincing the meat, especially in tropical climates. Next, you prepare your sausage casting and place on feeder roll or pipe on your sausage maker. Fill sausage maker with mixed ingredients and start making sausages. Congratulations, you have made your full sausage. It is important that you hang the sausages for at least 24 hours before using. 
If you are interested in producing sausages, you can search for and purchase industrial or home use equipment on the internet. Thank you for staying tuned. Now for the news and announcements. Fishers, farmers, aggregators and agro-processors are asked to note that the OECS Agriculture Competitiveness Agricom project call for business idea profile proposal has been extended to Friday 6th December 2019. For more information, contact the Agricom Project Implementation Unit Office, Ministry of Agriculture, Richmond Hill, Kingstown, St. Vincent and the Grenadines at telephone number 4561111, extension 311 or 321. The Forestry Services would like to remind the general public that the hunting season for partially protected wildlife species, which include mammals and reptiles, opened on October 1, 2019 and closes January 31, 2020, while birds closes at the end of February 2020. Hunters are reminded to avoid capturing undersized, pregnant or juvenile animals. This is to ensure the continuation of the species for generations to come. The Cuban tree frog, Osteophilus septentrionalis, an invasive species native to Cuba, has been found in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This frog was sighted in Camden Park and Kingstown. It is likely that the species arrived in St. Vincent and the Grenadines through the trade of commodities between countries, as it can easily become a stowaway in shipping crates and containers. There are a number of concerns regarding the introduction of the species into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as it can have a negative impact on other frogs as well as other wildlife species. It is therefore important that efforts be made to control the spread of the frog from reaching our interior forest areas. There is also the concern of the impact that the mucus secreted from the skin of these frogs can have on human health, especially persons who are affected by asthma. In other countries, the frog is now considered a household pest as it enters homes through plumbing systems and windows and can clog toilets and other plumbing. If you see the Cuban tree frog, please call the forestry services at telephone numbers 4578594 or 4578502. The public cooperation is greatly appreciated. The Fisheries Division in the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, Rural Transformation, Industry and Labour is presently conducting an island-wide inspection of all fishing vessels in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The objective is to ensure that fishing vessels in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are in compliance with fisheries regulations and the standards that govern construction, inspection and safety. The registration of fishing vessels started in 1994 based on the provisions outlined in the Fisheries Act of 1986. The division is conducting re-inspection in Zone 2 and 3 for the month of November 2019. Zone 2 areas are Clare Valley, Leyu and Barley, and Zone 3 areas are Pitibodel, Rosebank, Darkview, Chatibele and Fitzhughes. All fisherfolk and boat owners are to ensure that their fishing vessel or vessels are available with the necessary safety equipment to facilitate the inspection. where we come to the end of another Agribusiness Now program. Join us again next week Wednesday at 8.30pm for another informative package. Please feel free to contact us at the Communications Unit within the Ministry of Agriculture at 456-1111, extension 312 or 472, or email us at citumaf2 at hotmail.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Agribusiness Now St. Vincent, and click on the bell to get notifications on new videos. You can also like our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash agribusinessnow. On behalf of the communications unit within the Ministry of Agriculture, I am your host, Nakisa Samuel. Thank you for viewing and do have yourselves a wonderful night.